Sapka, Superstar Ezel Kenwa. Tonight we're focused on Apka and a tussle for leadership. Barrister, uh, let's move on with this conversation. So amidst all of this crisis, what efforts have you made to reconcile aggrieved members of the party? But, uh, when you talk about effort to reconcile aggrieved members of the party, uh, I, I think that would be quite some uh, um, um, ambiguous question. Uh, as a political party or as a set of executives, we just came on board in May. And I can tell you that um, if we have genuine issues within the party, uh, we will try as much as possible to settle it. Uh, of course, naturally, uh, as a you know, natural fallout of the congresses that we are held, we've had issues probably in some state chapters, and the party has been using the internal mechanism to set up various committees to resolve these genuine issues. Mm -hmm. And I place much emphasis on genuine issues. The persons probably you are talking about, or maybe you're making uh, um, some allusion or reference to, we've said severally. We've looked through our records and they are not members of the party. So uh, what, what, what sort of reconciliation should we be talking about with people who genuinely are not members of the party? They have no, absolutely no business with the party. So. We have no issues with them. If there are genuine concerns that are raised by genuine members of the party, of course the party will settle it. As we are doing already, we set up some committees, some ad hoc committees in some states. And genuinely, they are trying as much as possible to redress the issues as a consequence or as a result or direct fallout of the Congresses in those states. Naturally, it's just like um, after the conduct of an election, the next thing or the next option available to someone who lost at the election is to approach the election petition tribunal. And incidentally, INEC equally introduced quite, um, or the Electoral Act introduced an innovative provision that says that you can even apply to INEC and seek for review within seven days. And so, of course, in political parties, there is nothing like probably setting up an, an election petition tribunal. But we have the instrumentality of an appeal if probably there are issues or a direct consequence of uh, the, the Congresses and the Convention. So the party have been within its genuine means, trying to, you know, settle or address those genuine complaints or genuine issues or genuine concerns from the Congresses and the conventions that we are held in May. And we are doing that, it's quite on, I think, um, at the last count, we've had about almost all the states, the issues we have from the fallout, duly settled, and the party is moving on very well. So as for people who are on the outside running around from one pillar to the other post, from one court to the other, seeking to be coronated as national chairman. The Supreme Court has said you can become national chairman only through the instrumentality of a national convention. But then I have to say this, uh, for whatever it is worth, the purported claim by Chief Edozi Njoku started in 2019, on the 31st of May, according to him. And then, this is November, there is a new executive. So for whatever it is worth, I think he ought to come and join, or join hands with me as much as possible, get registered as a member of the political party. And if he believes that he has something genuine to offer the party in the expansion program of the party, in the feasibility program of my administration and other things, well, of course, we'll listen to him. We, are not, we don't, as much as possible, try to ignore any person. But like I said earlier on, the first step is that you must go down to your ward to register as a member of the party. And when we call or call for your record and we see that you're a genuine member of the party and you have some issues that you seek to be addressed by the party, I can assure you that I'm one person who has or lends that listening ear to genuine com complaint or genuine concerns by any member of the party. My phone lines are open, so I'm open to discussion. If they are genuine or if it stems from blackmail, count me out. I'm not interested in any blackmail. Barrister, I need to be clear. Are you saying uh, Njoku is not a registered member of ABGA? He's not a yes, clearly. He's not, a, he's not a member of the party. The party had its, um, the last revalidation exercise of membership of the party sometime in 2019. So he's not a member of the party. Okay. If you go down well, to his ward somewhere in Imo State, his name is not there. He's not a member of the party in any known ward in Nigeria. But what exactly are the big wigs in the party doing to resolve this issue? Uh, for instance, Governor Chukuma Solujo of Anambra State is the only one on the platform of APCA. How will you describe his role in this reconciliation efforts? 
you know, I, and I, I keep saying this, when you talk about reconciliation effort, I don't know how to probably drive home this point. Governor Chuku Masoludo, Professor Chuku Masoludo, like you rightly, like you rightly know, is the national leader of the party. If we have genuine concerns or genuine issues by members of the party, of course I can tell you that we will convene the National Executive Committee meeting of the party to address it. And if we cannot address it, we set up an ad hoc committee to address it. You rightly ask me a question now. Am I saying that Edozi Njoku is not a member of APGA? Because for him to be a member of APGA, he must produce a membership card signed then by Dr. Victor Ikeoye. I mean, he has none. We've gone through our record. He's not a member. You know, that's why, that's why his issue is very, very strange. Recall, we've had various issues in the party in the past, just like you said at the beginning of the program. Sometime in, I think it was in 2016, there was some sort of, um, do I say, a division within the party. So members of the National Working Committee of the party purportedly claim to have passed a vote of no confidence on the then national chairman. Now, these were national officers of the party. These were national officers of the party. And then, the then national leader of the party called a reconciliatory meeting. And the issues were resolved. That is how you know a division in the party. Not somebody, some imposter somewhere, who the party does not know, the party has no business with. Coming on board to say that he's a national chairman of the party. How? So what do you expect the party to do? So it means... If we call the person, we say, okay, what do you... Of course, we know what is in it for them. Essentially, it is just the money. They are looking for people to dupe. During the last primary election, when he knew that they had absolutely no recognition by INEC, how did they now go on to sell expression of interest and nomination form to persons? When you know you have no INEC recognition, so on what constitutionality or on what authority were you selling nomination form to innocent persons just to obtain under false pretense. So we know what is in it for them. And as far as we are political, as I say it clearly, as a political party, we don't succumb to blackmail. If we have genuine concerns, I can assure you that the national leader of the party is a man who is interested in building the party. And he has said it in a lot of fora. APGA is the foremost progressive party in Nigeria as, as of all the political parties that are in existence today. APGA is the first that had that word, progressive, in its name. And so, in line with that mantra, and in line with the name of the party, and of course the motto of the party is be your brothers and sisters keeper, we look out for genuine issues, and we address it. But to succumb to blackmail, no. There are certain things I won't say here. They keep calling people from here and there. Why don't you tell the governor to come and settle us? No, it does not work that way. Settle you with what? All right. So given the situation within APGA, I mean, like I said in my intro, this is not the first time APGA will be enmeshed in what uh, people call a uh, fracticidal leadership torso. Will you say the party is playing the politics of survival or the expansion? <laughs> I can tell you that the party is well on course in its expansion program. It is not playing any politics of survival. APGA, as a political party, is here to stay. And I always say it anywhere I go. What we are doing as much as possible is to try to advertise APGA as a rebranded political party and informing or telling Nigerians to key in with the progressive mantra of APGA, especially now that the party has decided to give the young people of Nigeria a chance. And that's why I always reiterate this call in any forum I find myself that APGA is truly the party for all young people in Nigeria to come in and achieve whatever aspirations they have. And like I always say, I've said it in this station in the past, I've said it in various places. What we do is that we try to advertise APGA using the Anambra model. And what is the Anambra model? From 2006, that APGA came in to office as the party at the control of government of Anambra State, it has been sustained development and sustained improvement. Today, Anambra ranks tops amongst everything in Nigeria. In the entire southern Nigeria, Anambra ranks as the number one state in the index of ease of doing business. Today, 
in terms of human capital development, Anambra is top. So in every statistics or in every indices that you use to measure good governance, Anambra is always on top. And incidentally, Anambra is the only political party controlled by APGA. And we say, if we can do it in Anambra, then we can do so in so many other states in Nigeria. And so we are using the administration of the national leader of the party to market the party and say, yes, APGA has been there, probably at the periphery, trying to play the politics of survival like you said. But now, the party has come of age. And the party is saying, now is the time for Nigerians to give APGA a chance. Of course, we saw the impact, and I say it proudly. The impact um, we, 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 the, 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 the presidential candidate of um, um, what is it called Labour Party had during the last election. Whatever you ascribe to him in terms of achievement, he did while being the governor of Anambra State on the platform of APGA. And we keep to say this, we keep saying this every time. For whatever it is worth, APGA has continued to exemplify good leadership in every facet it has found itself in Nigeria. And we'll continue to show that. The only thing is that we've not been able to market ourselves to say this is what we have done. And we keep saying it. From 2006, under the administration of um, uh, Mr. P2B as the governor of Anambra State, under the platform of APGA, implementing APGA manifesto to the administration of Chief Willie Obiano, still implementing APGA manifesto. And now we've taken it a bit higher with Professor Chuku Masoludo, still implementing the progressive manifesto of APGA. So, I mean, Barista, so many people will disagree with you when you said uh, Abga has always had good leadership because there is this notion out there that this crisis year on year on will continue to happen because uh, leadership, past leaders of Abga have derailed from the fundamental objectives of the party because of uh, either cluelessness or sheer incompetence. Would you agree with that? I, I do not, and I'll tell you why. Without even, without even Barton and I lead out, tell you no, you're absolutely wrong. If you check the evolution of every crisis that the party has been involved, that, that, that the party has been emerged in, it starts from someone approaching a court to get one order or the other one. There has never been any genuine issue. I mentioned one now. In 2016, there was an attempt by some persons or whatever it was worth, to say that the then national chairman, that they had passed a vote of no confidence, it did not last a week. The national leader of the party called a reconciliatory meeting, and then the issues were laid bare. At the end of the day, everybody embraced each other, and they forged on. The next thing was for some persons to now go to a court to obtain an order. And of course, you know, the courts are free. Anybody can walk into any court and find any process. What we just need simply to do is to brief a lawyer, present a claim. And, of course, I have to absolve some of the judicial officers because a judge does not know the internal affairs of APGA. What he knows is that someone has brought a claim before him and has made some depositions, either in the affidavit in support of the originating someone. And most of them, they don't even join the members, the key officers of the party. Just like I gave an example what happened in Jigawa. Someone, an imposter, Judo KK, filed an action against another person who no member, non members of the party. The party does not know them. So how do you ascribe such division or purported division in leadership of the party to the party? When clearly these persons we are not members of the party, the party does not know their existence, the party has no dealing or any business with them. If you want to know the officers of the party, you go to INEC and request for the official records containing the leaders, executive or officers of the party elected at any national convention or congresses. So when people decide to come together to foment trouble, approach a court to obtain one frivolous right. order or the, or, or the other one, how do you ascribe such as a genuine division or leadership issues on the part of the party? No, it does not work that way. So All right. For you to say that probably there has been some issues or maladministration with the affairs of the party, then you must show a genuine concern or genuine division in leadership orchestrated by genuine members of the party, not outsiders and bystanders who have absolutely no business of the, with the party, but people who run, who run from one court to the other one seeking to obtain one frivolous order. And I will, I will mention this before, before, before I sign off. We have noticed... It is always 
probably a quadrannual event. Once the governorship election in Anambra State approaches, some persons who believe, oh, because in APGA government, we don't share anything from the coffers of the government. The government controlled by APGA exists simply to serve the masses of Anambra State. And so when they try as much as possible to get one thing or the other from the governor on the platform of APGA and they don't do that, the next thing is they seek for means to derail the administration or to scuttle the administration. And once they do that, in the hope and expectation that when they do that, the governor can call them and say, okay, sue, see, right. take so, so, and so. No, we don't do that in APGA. Uh, we're, we're gradually running out of time, but it's very important for me to ask you this question. You, you promised to bring back the first governor elected on APGA platform, and that's Peter Obi, and uh, former national chairman, yes. Chekwa Sekori, to the party. How far have you gone with that? Well, I, I can tell you, um, one, you mentioned Chekwa Sekori. I've spoken with Chekwa, um, I think, uh, two times on the phone, and I, I did promise that I will pay him a visit. Uh, well, as for Mr. Peter Obi, of course, you know, um, it was just a um, few weeks ago that the Supreme Court drew um, the curtain on his presidential quest. And then, uh, of course, you know, he belongs to another political party now, which is the Labour Party. And uh, as much as possible, whatever incursion or whatever approaches the party will make, will try as much as possible to respect um, his right to freedom of association. Like I said, he belongs to a political party. That does not mean that we're not going to reach out. But that is one that the party was going to discuss on the strategy. We believe that he's a good product that the party can leverage on in its quest to expand beyond the shores of the Southeast and then to make reasonable foray into other parts of the country. And I can tell you that that is on course. In due course, right. the party, when the executive and leaders of the party sit down together, of course, we are going to re-strategize on the means how we are going to achieve that. But like I said, he belongs to another political party now, and he flew the, the flag of that political party. Mm. All right. But I can also tell you that many people believe that Peter Obi can never leave Labour Party and return to Abga. But I'm very hopeful, or I look forward to how you will excel with that. So quickly before we go, uh, why well, has well, it been... Well, well um, um, just, 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 a little, just a little addition. Um, some two years ago, nobody would have believed that Peter B would have left the PDP. But he did. <laughs> and so this is Nigeria. All right, you have a point. <laughs> but, but quickly, why has it been difficult for Abga to extend its influence beyond Anambra State? In 30 seconds. Sorry, I didn't hear. I, I didn't get your question. Why has it been difficult for Abga to extend its influence beyond Anambra State? That's, that's, that's what the party is addressing. You see, there are a number of issues. But when you say influence beyond that number, I said, mind you, Abga won election into the into Imo state. You are aware of that. The governor Rocha Zokorocha was elected on the platform of Abga before he decided to abandon the party and then to join another political party, which is a discussion for another day. But the party has made meaningful progress. And that's why I said, I'm talking about my administration now what we feel, because like I said earlier on, we have reviewed mm -hmm. the performance of the party. APGA was registered, I think it was in late 2002. Until date, we've extracted the strength of various administrations that have been on the saddle of leadership of APGA. From the days of Chief Chekwa Sokorie to um, Senator Victor Ume to Chief Victor Oye, and now myself. So we've looked at the areas of strength and it appeared there was that concentration in the Southeast. And that's why in the drive agenda we have, we decided to add the expansion program of the party. And uh, in, in, in doing that, we are looking majorly at some other parts of the country because it's all about inclusiveness. Uh, if the other party, if other parts of the country do not feel that sense of belonging, it will be difficult for them to actually key into your agenda or your mantra, no matter how solid your performance is. But the party has been trying. The party won in 2019, the party won... Uh, the, uh, I think three seats in the federal house in, in, in Benue State. It won two seats in the federal house in Taraba State. As of today, we have some House of Assembly members in Taraba. We have in Bayelsa. We have in Eboy. So, All right. I, I, Arisa, I, I think, so I think the asking. party can only look, look, up, look, up, look up to the future with much optimism and enthusiasm. All right. And 
with the way we are aggressively pursuing the expansion program in the drive agenda, I believe in the next general election that APGA will put in a much better and stellar performance in that general election come right. 2027. And so we, we are very optimistic very and quite upbeat about so that. Much. Right. We wish you the very best. Thank you so much.